Hi everybody, welcome back to um, our pre-calc trig notes. I'm going to go through 11.6 with you. It's just a little bit of, of a review of the material that you're supposed to know for the uh, units. Um, I'm trying this in landscape mode today. Someone suggested that possibly rotating the camera might be a good idea for these videos. So I'm just going to give it a try. Uh, please let me know, comment, uh, or send me a what's mail if you prefer the portrait mode or the landscape mode for these videos in the future. All right, so uh, feel free to pause at any point in time so you can copy down the notes. Um, but here we go with our trig notes for today. So I started off by writing on the formulas you're supposed to know. So this would be a good time to pause the video and write down your formulas. All right, here I go here. Uh, so I'm going to go through and just do some review questions with you. Uh, this first question, I'm actually going to number these questions with different numbers. These are uh, actually going to be questions from your homework tonight. So as I'm doing them, I'm going to walk you through essentially how to do a few of the questions on your review sheets. Um, so I'm going to number them as if they were to show up on your review sheet. So I'm going to start with question number four on your review sheet. Uh, and again, this will be posted on WITS so that you can see um, what this is. But the negative square root of three, cosecant theta, plus the cosecant theta, cotan theta, plus two cosecant theta, is equal to two cosecant theta. And the directions are to solve over the interval uh, 0 to 2 pi. All right, so these are just normal equations to work on solving. So I'm going to go ahead and start by switching everything in terms of x, because I think that's a little bit easier to work with. So when you're doing this, anytime I see cosecant, um, I'm going to go ahead and put an x in place. Um, oh, nuts. I just noticed there's a cotangent as well. Scrap that idea. I'm just going to move everything. Let's see. I'm noticing here that there's a cosecant on both sides. I'm going to subtract that over. And in the process of doing that, they both cancel out. So that's a nice, a nice little um, thing happening here. So I got negative radical three cosecant theta plus cosecant theta cotan theta. And that's going to leave me with equals to zero. Um, now I'm looking at this and it's not really a quadratic, but I do see that I can factor this somehow. I'm going to use the strategy of uh, the GCF factoring. So this would be a good time to pause the video to see if you can factor out a GCF here. Uh, the GCF I'm noticing is that they both have a cosecant. So I'm going to factor out a cosecant and I'm left with negative radical 3 plus cotan theta is equal to zero. And now I'm just about finished. I just make my T chart. On this side, I get cosecant theta is equal to zero. On this side, I get negative radical three plus cotan theta equals zero. Uh, let's see, to start solving these, cosecant I know is the reciprocal of um, sine. So this is really saying the sine of theta, and you take the reciprocal of this, is one over zero. Well, there's a problem there. Um, 1 over 0 is an undefined fraction, so I'm just going to cross that off and reject that side. And again, these are my notes. I'm going to write down why. I'm rejecting this because this is undefined. Uh, all right, so let's move on to this side. I'm going to add radical 3 to both sides. I get cotan theta equals radical 3. And um, I know cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so this is really saying the tangent of theta is 1 over radical 3. And of course, at this point, we know to rationalize this. I'm going to multiply this by radical 3 over radical 3. So I've got tan theta is equal to radical 3 over 3. Okay, so um, this would be a good time on the side of my paper to just jot down that chart that we're all supposed to be really familiar with. So I'm going to go ahead and jot that chart down on my notes. So I've got pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. You've got sine of theta, cos of theta, and tan of theta. Going straight across, this is 1 half, radical 2 over 2, radical 3 over 2. 
This goes in the opposite order. And then tangent is just dividing those out. So radical three over three, one, and radical three. Again, that's a chart we should have memorized at this point. Just having it handy for this um, set of notes is a good idea. All right, so where am I going with this? Well, uh, at this point, I can do my SRQ strategy. So I'm looking at this and I'm noticing, okay, this is a positive value. I'm looking for the reference angle. It's tangent radical three over three, the reference angle is pi over six. And Q stands for quadrant, so I wanna know where is tangent positive. So I'm going back to that all students take chemistry and tangent is positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. So again, with these, I'm a visual person. I think that drawing a picture would be very helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a picture of an angle in quadrant one with a reference angle of pi over six. Uh, in quadrant one, the angle is just the angle measure from the x-axis to the terminal side. So in this case, my first answer is literally going to be pi over six. To get my answer in quadrant three, I'm gonna draw an angle in quadrant three. The reference angle is pi over six. And the angle I'm looking for is from the x-axis all the way around. So if you remember, this is pi. Um, so pi plus pi over six. So I'm looking at six pi over six plus pi over six to give me seven pi over six. So those are my two answers for this question. Uh, that was question number four from your review sheet, which is posted on WITS. Okay, the next question I wanna go over with you is question number eight from that review sheet as well. Again, I'm just picking a few questions I think are pretty challenging uh, to help you get through this sheet nicely. But I would like to have this in your notes, so please copy this in your notes as if they were notes. So it's three sine theta minus cos two theta is equal to four sine squared theta. And the first thing I'm noticing here is that they're not all the same function, but I do see that there's a double angle here, cos two theta, that's a double angle. So again, this is our notes, this is a double angle. When you see a double angle, you wanna substitute with one of the double angles up on top. Uh, so the kind of cool thing about cosine is that there are three possible formulas to choose from. Remember, there's this top one, the middle one, or this one. They're all cos two theta. So you pick the formula that has the same trig function that number eight has. Number eight has a lot of sine in it. So I want to pick the one that has only sine in it. I'm going to use this last one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to substitute this last formula in place of cos two theta in this question number eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the question. 3 sine theta minus the quantity. I'll put this in parentheses to show that I'm substituting it in. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And I'm going to copy everything else down. Now in this question, I do have just sine throughout. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite them in terms of x's. This is 3x uh, minus 1 plus 2x squared is equal to 4x squared. I just distributed that negative sign. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and notice that this is a quadratic. I'm going to get this equal to zero by moving everything to the right-hand side. So that leaves me with 2x squared minus 3x and a plus 1. Uh, this is a nice problem that just factors out into, let's see, uh, 2x and x. Factors of 1 are just 1 and 1, so I'll use a 1 and a 1. They need to add up to negative three, so I know both signs have to be negative. To double check that, negative one x, negative two x, does add up to negative three x. Equals zero. Making myself my t chart here. On the left hand side, I get two x minus one equals zero, therefore x equals one half. On the right hand side, you get x minus one equals zero, so therefore x equals one. Uh, this question did not have x's in it, originally had sine, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in sine in place of the x. So sine theta equals one half, and sine theta equals one. All right, so here we are again with our reverse SRQ here, SRQ. Okay, so let's see, the sine here, it literally says positive in front of the one half, so I'll put a plus. The reference angle, I'm gonna refer back to this chart over here. Where is sine a half? The reference angle is pi over six. I'm looking for where sine is positive, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my axes. All students take chemistry. Quadrants one and two are where sine is positive. 
Okay, so to finish this question off, I'm going to draw an angle in quadrant one. The reference angle is pi over six. Uh, again, in quadrant one, there's really nothing to do because the angle of theta is that angle literally. So I've got one answer is just pi over six. In quadrant two, there's a little bit more work to be done. I'm going to go ahead and draw my picture in quadrant two. There's my pi over six angle. But theta is the angle from the x-axis to this terminal side. So I know this is pi. And to figure out what the angle is from the x-axis to the terminal side, I'm taking pi, take away, pi over six. So that's six pi over six, take away pi over six. to give me five pi over six. So those are my two answers on that side. Now on this side over here, the sign is equal to one. When I see numbers like one, negative one, or zero, that's gonna to signal to me this is on the unit circle. So again, if you see things like negative one, zero, or a one, think about the unit circle. So I'm looking for where sine is equal to one. Sine is the y value. So where does y equal one? Right up here, zero comma one. And that is at the theta measure of pi over two. All right, so that's question four and question eight from that homework. And again, we're adding these to our notes. I'm going to turn my page. Actually, let me do a screenshot of the front of this so you can see the whole thing. So here's my top of my notes. You can pause and copy down what you need to. And here are the bottom of my notes. You can pause and copy down what you need to. And go ahead onto the next sheet and um, just do a few more questions here. I want to try question number 10 with everybody. So on my notes here, I'm going to go to question number 10. And question 10 tells me that the sine of theta is negative 4 fifths. Um, and it also tells me where pi is less than or equal to theta is less than 3 pi over 2. And it wants me to find the tangent of 2 theta. Whoops, I just noticed that I didn't write that as one of the formulas on the top of my formulas up here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Maybe go back to the front here. We have to fill in the tan of 2 theta formula. The tan of 2 theta formula is 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. Let's go ahead and add that to the formulas. Um, on the front of your sheet. Okay, so let's go back to this question here. Now that we know we have to use that formula. Okay, so here's how I approach this question. Um, this is not on any chart that we know, four over five, and it's not on the unit circle. So because it's not on the chart or the unit circle, so it's not on any charts or the unit circle, Therefore, that's a signal to draw the triangle. What does that mean? Okay, well, in this question, it tells me it's going to be from pi until 3 pi over 2. So that's going to be a signal to me on where to draw my triangle. So from pi to 3 pi over 2, let's see. If I draw my axes, again, as a recap, that's 0. This is pi over 2. This is pi, and this is 3 pi over 2. So from pi to 3 pi over 2, that's talking about the third quadrant. So you can draw any angle in the third quadrant that you want. And I need to make this into a right triangle. So you always make it towards the x-axis. Here's my theta measure. Okay, how does that help me? Well, now I can use the idea of SOHCA TOA. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A. They tell me here sine is 4 fifths. So that means this is the opposite over hypotenuse. So in my picture, opposite is 4, but hypotenuse is 5. I need to find this missing side somehow. I know I could find the missing side using Pythagorean theorem. So I've got 4 squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Uh, that's 16 plus b squared is equal, I'm sorry, that should be a 5, is equal to 25. Uh, so therefore, b is equal b squared is equal to nine, and b is equal to three. Okay, how does that help me in this question? Well, the question does say to find the tangent of two theta. So I just wrote that on the top of my notes. I'm going to copy it down one more time. 
The tan of two theta is the formula two tan theta divided by one minus tan squared theta. Okay, so now I can use my picture here to figure out what the tangent is. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Remember right here, opposite over adjacent. Uh, let's see here. So um, opposite over adjacent. So I've got the tan of two theta equals two times. So opposite over adjacent, we've got four thirds. One minus parentheses tan again. So it's four thirds squared. Uh, I do want to pause for a minute here and just notice what sign I'm choosing here. I'm intentionally um, choosing a particular sign, and it goes back to that concept of all students take chemistry. We're in quadrant three, so tangent is supposed to be positive. So this is supposed to be positive here because we're in quadrant three. Positive because we're in quadrant three. In question number nine, be very careful um, what quadrant you're in because one of those values will end up being negative because of that quadrant. All right, so now I'm just going to grab my calculator and just type this right on my calculator here. I'm going to slide this up so you can see what my screen looks like. I'm going to clear out whatever's in there. Alpha y equals 2 times alpha y equals again, 4 thirds, 1 minus parentheses alpha y equals four thirds quantity squared. Um, I can type it all in one step here to give me an output of negative 24 over seven. So no difficult math required, just knowing how to use your calculator. All right, that's question number 10. And the last question I wanna cover with you today um, will be question number 15. The rest of the questions, just have to look at the notes and see if you can, I'm sorry, the answer key and see if you can follow along. So the last question I want to do with you today is number 15 from the homework tonight. And that question is a proof. It says to prove that the cos of theta divided by 1 plus cos of 2 theta is equal to 1 over 2 cos theta. All right, so with these proofs, again, you want to pick the side that looks a little bit more complex. I think the left-hand side looks more complex, and I see that double angle again. So keep your eyes open for things like that. So cosine of 2 theta. There are three formulas from the front that you can use. Um, I'm going to pick the one that has just cosine in it, because if I look at this side over here, there's only cosine. So that would make sense. Just pick the formula that has cosine in it so it can eventually match this. So I'm using the formula from the front of the notes. We're going to leave the top the way it is. This is one plus, the formula from the front of the notes is two cos squared minus one. And again, with the proof, you only manipulate one side. You don't manipulate both sides. Okay, so now where do we go here? Well, on the bottom, if you notice, this one and this negative one can just cancel out. So I'm left with cos of theta divided by two cos squared theta. Okay, something kind of cool happens here. The cos theta on top and the cos squared can cancel. And on top, don't forget you have a placeholder of a 1. So 1 over 2 cos theta matches perfectly to this 1 over 2 cos theta. So I can do my check, my nice little smiley face, and just say thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I do miss you guys greatly and I hope that this review helps you complete that homework tonight. Um, tonight's homework is to finish the 11-7 review sheet which I will post on WITS for you. Uh, again I'm going to just zoom out one more time so maybe if you want to take a picture a uh, screenshot of this so you can finish the notes you are welcome to do that. Thanks a lot for listening. Miss you guys. This is Mrs. Kirk. Have a great day.